Hello everyone from Osaka, Japan. So today's video is about how to learn jazz if you're a beginner, a beginner to jazz. Hopefully you've played the guitar before and you know how it works to a certain extent, but you, for some reason you got interested in playing jazz and this is the video for you. It's a philosophical one. And I think it's an, it's an important video to make because in a lot of my previous videos, I kind of criticize the current system of jazz education because it does, it's not taking into account so many important factors and there are a lot of analogies I can make to language learning because it's the same thing it's the same problem that I see in the language uh, learning world as I've said in, in recent videos teaching is not just transmitting information I think a good teacher takes an account into account um, I guess the psychology of the student, the, the psychology of language, of um, inform, transmitting information. And for me, what's, what I try to do is to take a holistic approach to teaching, to consider life circumstances because they do affect how we practice music. Because actually from a very black and white point of view, a lot of the advice that people give it's not that it's necessarily wrong. A lot of the information is correct to a certain extent, but it, the reality is in certain life situations that some of those, uh, the advice, some of the advice that is being given out there is not realistic at all. And a lot of people end up not getting good, not progressing or even just giving up. And so today I wanna talk about that to approach things from hopefully a logical point of view and then the other topic we're going to talk about closely related is which standards should you learn first this is a huge topic you go you type you type on the internet like which what are the must know jazz standards and this is also a complicated topic and we're going to talk about it from different angles from the perspective of a beginner but first if you like my content please consider liking subscribing uh, leaving a comment, sharing, and all that stuff. And if you want to support me somehow, you can check out some of my courses on Sound Slice, um, on DC Music School, to check out my books. You can find all the links in the description um, area. All right, let's get started. I think if you want to learn to play jazz, you have to figure out why it is you want to learn to play jazz. And there are a lot of wrong reasons to start. But sometimes by toughing it out, you eventually find out why you do want to play jazz. But let me give you an example. My own personal story is that I learned jazz twice in my la life. For the, there's the real way that I learned to play jazz, which is through the music of Django Reinhardt. And a few years before that, I decided I had to learn jazz because everyone, magazines, teachers said, that I should learn jazz to be a good player. And so I think that is a very, very bad reason to be learning to play jazz because you may not realize this now as a beginner, but jazz is vast. There are so many styles of jazz, so many approaches. Where do you even start? It's not realistic to, to learn everything. Very few people are that versatile. People actually specialize. And when I discovered Django Reinhardt and then Gypsy Jazz through Django Reinhardt, for the first time in my life, the path was narrowed down. I knew exactly what I had to do. Um, I knew exactly what I had to practice, more or less. And from then on, it was the, the journey has been fairly organic in, and uh, I wouldn't say easy, but... Whereas before, it's like, oh, where do I start? What do I do? Like, it's, it was aimless. For, for the first time in my life, there was a direction. I think the best reason to ever do something, to learn a style of music, is if, 
if you genuinely like it you hear something and you are, you are inspired to do it and when you have that it becomes so much easier to teach and it's so much easier to learn and like i said the problem is that there are so many styles of jazz so many approaches and i can't i would never dare say that one way is the right way but i do have a soft spot for the earlier styles of jazz for the simple well for the simple reason that because i like it i love it it sounds great to my ears it touches me but another practical reason is that a lot of styles that came later on uh, actually came from the older styles of jazz and understanding the older styles of jazz makes it easier to learn newer styles of jazz but still you play something because you like it so if you love fusion which is in my opinion quite removed from earlier styles of jazz then of course that's what you should do and then you should check out that community and check out what the best way to learn it might be but if you were to come to me if i had a say in things if someone came to me without knowing why they want to play jazz well already that's already that's already a bad start but i would suggest okay we're gonna learn older an older style of jazz simply for the reasons that i mentioned one that's my main area of expertise and two a lot of the more contemporary styles of jazz came from the older styles of jazz and what i would do in the beginning is not make students practice scales arpeggios uh, chord tone stuff nothing like that we're going to play songs i'm going to have the student learn songs because by learning songs you're playing music right away because that's usually the point of playing a style of music you want to play music and jazz music is a community music it's usually played with people and there's even this jam session culture so people get together they might not speak the same language but they know the same songs therefore they can communicate with each other uh, so I would start by teaching songs to the students the chords I would teach them how to play a very very basic accompaniment depending on their skill level and then I would teach them the melody have them play the, I would play the rhythm the chords for them and they can play the melody uh, and the soloing can come a little bit later it just depends on which songs we work on first some are harder than others and also I would try to spend time with the student to get them to listen to different players to see what they like so which let's say we're working on autumn leaves we look at different recordings of autumn leaves different players it's like hey does this player does this sound good to you and I try to encourage the student to listen to different recordings of the song so that's how it would start and by working on playing music first and foremost above all else well it's fun right but it's also training your ears to hear the sounds and to absorb them at, at the instinctive level you're not necessarily thinking two five one blah 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 although that's great but you're just knowing that this is going to this it's going to this and then if i taught you another song like honeysuckle rose you realize oh wow at least on the guitar it's the same shape so there's something happening there that's similar well this is called a two five one but even before even knowing that it's a two five one you have that subconscious uh understanding of the music which is what i talk about in my in my book and even if you learn to, to just play the melody over the chord progression you also hear instinctively over time how the melody is relating to the chords <laughs> Thank you. 
carbon down to tune. It's super hot. Here's the thing. If I started my lessons by showing you like all the scales, all the modes, all the arpeggios that you can play all over autumn leaves. Because you're not experiencing jazz. You don't even know what jazz sounds like. Especially if you're starting from a blank slate. And I'm the one introducing you to jazz. You have no idea what it sounds like. You can practice these scales. I can tell you, all right. Um, over C minor, you play C Dorian, F7, F Mixolydian, D flat, Ion, Lydian, etc., Locrian, blah, 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 or even arpeggios. No real jazz musician, at least in the early, older styles, plays in this way at all no one at least no one famous no one that's respected so you can practice all those shapes as well as you want and even like the teacher will tell okay now try to practice aim for the the guy tones okay that's a little bit more musical there but still i can't think of a jazz musician, famous one in the early styles, who plays exclusively in this way. What I hear is language, vocabulary, coherence, stylistic coherence. This is something that you can only absorb by listening to the music, by checking out the community. Check out my previous video uh, that I've made in the previous weeks. It's kind of like uh, learning a language. It's exactly the same thing. I think a lot of language teachers are really, really bad. And um, actually, for those of you who don't know, I live in Japan now. And I'm not Japanese. Japanese is not my mother tongue. It's a language I'm still working on. But I've reached a certain degree of fluency. But um, actually, before even knowing that I was ever going to move to Japan, when I was in college, I actually took a course in Japanese and it was such a bad class, really, really bad. Because the teacher, she was pretty mean too, she insisted that we don't learn Japanese. She insisted that we learn the Japanese alphabet. And actually there are three alphabet systems. She wanted, just because she was taught that way through a book or something, just because uh, other teachers taught that way, she insisted that we learn this one system, which is called hiragana. Yeah, that's the American pronunciation, hiragana. And um, the problem is, in Jap Japanese, there are three systems. And they are used together. So if you just even learn that one system, you go to Japan, you're screwed. You'll only be able to read, uh, I don't want to say a percentage, but like, a small percentage of what's there and you're gonna be missing everything else and furthermore just learning the alphabet like that it make doesn't make you understand the language at all it's kind of like I don't speak Spanish but from what I understand this the way Spanish is written you guys tell me it's uh, you pronounce it the way it's written so it's not it shouldn't be too difficult to learn how to read in Spanish you might butcher the, the intonation, the accent, but by and large, I think it's, it's easy to learn to read Spanish. But that doesn't mean you'll understand what you're reading. And understanding what you're reading makes all the difference. Because I got nothing out of that class. So we just spent the whole 12 weeks, the entire semester, learning to write hiragana. And I forgot it all anyway, because I couldn't use it. Even if you know how to pronounce words you can like recognize them if the words that you're reading have no meaning it's all pointless and it's the same thing with music i can teach you in the beginning all the scales all the modes and arpeggios but because you don't even know what to do with it you're not making anything coherent and you won't learn as fast whereas if i started to teach you the songs and i start to show you some vocabulary at least you have something coherent to work with. Let's say over this chord, and this chord goes over both. Even without having to understand the theory behind it, just know that it sounds good over this. That would be a really good start. And then eventually I'll explain the theory of why this phrase works over this. 
mm-hmm. it has a lot to do with common tones, but I'll explain the theory, as much of, of the theory as I need to explain to get you to understand the meaning behind it so that you can apply it elsewhere in other situations. And that's a better way to start. So when it comes to language learning, I think it's more beneficial to learn basic vocabulary, usable vocabulary in day-to-day situations. For example, going to the convenience store, what to say, like, can I pay by credit card? Can I pay by cash? Um, Can I get a pack of cigarettes? Whatever, if you smoke. (laughs) Things like that. And then I'll teach you what to say. Then eventually, okay, we can start to dissect those sentences like the grammar, even how to write it. So then you can actually recognize it when you're reading. So that's actually how I learned to read Japanese. I started uh, by learning to speak at first. And then after I learned the alphabet. And then all the words that I knew already, I started to write them. And then it had meaning. As opposed to just writing the alphabet from like in order. In, in Jap- like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. It makes no sense. Why not make actual words? Read actual words that have meaning. So that's something I would highly suggest beginners do is to find a reason to want to play jazz and to find out who, which style of jazz that you like. And you go to your teacher and tell them, hey, I want to, I like this. And maybe your teacher can recommend, oh, if you like this, maybe you will like this. And then slowly you, you, you expand your mind and you start to focus on the things that you like. Because like I said, there are so many ways to play jazz. There is not one correct way, not one correct system. And that's, for me, that's the beauty of it. Like each, um, when, when you start to study like um, the, the styles of individual players, you'll notice that they each have their own way of interpreting the harmonies. It's something that I talk a lot about, like harmonic direction. Everyone has their own approach and that's, that's how everyone ends up having their own distinct styles. Wes Montgomery had things that he liked to do. Joe Pass had things he liked to do. Charlie Christian, uh, uh, Django Reinhardt. And then you check out what you like and you take what you like and that's how you come up with your own style as well. Rather than a teacher telling, all right, over uh, this chord you should play this because that's what the theory says. No, you play something that you like because it has meaning to you, it touches you. Does that make sense? So that's what I would do. In the beginning, with beginners, um, I would encourage them to, to just learn songs and I would play the songs with them and then start to show them a little bit of basic vocabulary that they can plug in. And depending on their talent level, start to show them actual real improvisation concepts as well. But everything at a progress level and, and uh, everything according to the level of the student, but always prioritizing making actual music first. But then, which songs should you learn? That's like the million dollar question. Well, the truth is, you should learn the songs that you like. That's it. But then, can you find people to play with? That is the next question. And do the people that you play with know those songs? Are they willing to play those songs with you? Let's say, for example, you like a song that's super obscure. I can't think of one right now. But no one in your town or no one in your area knows the song or even wants to play the song. So then, unfortunately, you're kind of screwed. In which case, you maybe move to another city. And Actually, people will do that for music. People move to other countries, to other cities, just for the music. Like here in Japan, all the young people have moved to Tokyo. So there are very few young people playing jazz music outside of Tokyo. There are, but like compared to Tokyo, it's, it's really, really small. And they all move there for that specific reason. Just like some people will move to Paris to play swing music. Some people will move to, to Europe just to play gypsy jazz, etc. People do that. People move to New York to play this. People move to Nashville to play country. They move to... XY city to play bluegrass, to play Brazilian music, etc. People do that. So that's a, that's a choice you, you can make. Life is unfair that way. Uh, if there's no one to play what you want to play with and you badly want to play it, it's something you have to con- consider. Anyway, let's say where you live, there's actually a jazz scene, like a jazz jam session that happens once a week or even once a month. Well, you should att- attend every, at every single opportunity. You go there, you don't even have to play, just go and listen and befriend some of the musicians maybe and take note of which songs are being played. 
uh, if you see that every week X or Y song is being played and your goal is to be able to play with those musicians, then you should learn those songs. And you can go on the internet, you'll find a list of all the songs that people tend to, tend to play. I've been to jam sessions in, kind of all over the world and all, often revolves more or less around the same like 20, 30 songs and then a few like special ones out there. But start there. Everything I try to do, I try to do it with purpose. And it's the same thing when it comes to learning. There has to be a reason to, to learn something. So, for example, a song that gets called very often, uh, There Will Never Be Another, for instance. Because it's, it's such a universal song, it's, called all over, it's played all over the world. So maybe it's worth checking it out. That's the reason why I would learn that song. Actually, in the beginning, I didn't really like that song. I just felt like the melody was strange. It didn't, didn't really touch me. But now I like playing it because I played it so much. Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> and it's the same thing with chords. Sometimes certain songs have different harmonizations. It can be played with different sets of chords. Which ones should you learn? And I've... I'm, I'm, I tend to be very obsessed with harmony, so I've learned so many different versions of the same song. But often, I use my ears. I go to the jam session and I listen to, alright, these are the chords that these people are using. I'm going to use these changes. So I learned that one. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends how you see it, things have gone so standardized that people often, even professionals, have forgotten that songs can be played in different ways. Another thing you can do is organize private jam sessions with people who are like-minded and then here you have a lot more control over the changes over the songs and you decide democratically which songs to learn and then maybe start playing gigs together i don't know that's how i feel jazz music should be learned or any style of music what do you guys think? i'm curious to to hear your thoughts on this hopefully you can find teachers who can guide you in this way and it'll make things a whole lot more enjoyable in my opinion not only more enjoyable but also more logical and if you watch some of my previous videos from the previous weeks the recent videos i talk about how even though jazz is, se is a seemingly complex style of music it's not as complex as you one might think it to be but you don't have to be soloing in the beginning especially as a guitar player you can be playing chords you can be accompanying and if you can find a mentor who agrees to let you accompany them while they solo, they get to practice, you can learn a lot about soloing just by listening to them and asking questions. Eventually, they'll start to show you little things here and there that you can uh, incorporate, that you can start to work on slowly. In my case, if we're working on an autumn lease, I would be showing students like basic vocabulary. I would tell them, hey, you know, over the C minor or the F7, here's a nice phrase. <laughs> Then after the bebop, there's a nice phrase. And then you realize, hey, G minor is the same as C minor, like the same chord family, minor. What if I did? And then one piece at a time and encouraging them to 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 use them at any given opportunity and then as I see they start to understand the language there's a little bit of coherence then I start to show them a little bit of the grammar and explain why it works etc etc everything always though according to the 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 ability of the student to absorb the information some students will need to spend more time maybe just acquiring basic vocabulary. Some others 
will be able to start to improvise right away because they have the talent for it. Watch my video from a few weeks ago. It all depends. And when I, when I spend time with someone, I try to get to understand them, to, to know what their level is, what they can handle, what they cannot handle. And we work from there. So that's basically my curriculum. I think it's important to learn to play music as soon as possible. And then how we get there, it will depend on the student's level. And as soon as possible, I would want the student to go out there and start to jam with people at jam sessions, if there is such a thing. Hopefully there is. If there's not, the less of an environment there is, the harder it is to learn. It's not impossible, but it's life is, like I said, life is unfair that way. Ideally, you should have people to play with, a community player. The bigger the community, it makes sense, right? Why is it that in certain parts of the world, uh, there's a high concentration of high-level players? Because they're all there together. There's a huge pool of musicians learning together. But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I would encourage the students to go to the jam sessions. And I, I might even go with the students. Like, and, um, because obviously, the student might feel super nervous. And I would actually go on stage with the students so that I can be there to back them up in case they start to feel too nervous. Because some people don't know how to play with beginners. They start playing all these substitutions or messing around with the tempo or the rhythm. And that freaks students out. I don't know why people do that. Either they're deluding themselves, they're, they're, they're jerks, or they're completely unable to read the air, so to speak, to read the room. Read the air is a Japanese expression. <laughs> but in English, say read the room. So there we go. That's how I think jazz should be approached. Um, let me know what you think. Thank you.